Hello, welcome back to another Shapes.io video. I'm back in the alpha version, and if you read the title, you would know this video is all about filters. Once again, to gain access to the alpha version, you need to join the Discord. The link to that will be in the description. So let's hop right in. First, let's talk about how filters work. There are two main ways to use them, but one is more practical than the other. The first way is to filter off items from a belt. So as you can see, we have a mix of red and squares. The red is filtered up, and the squares are filtered to the right. If we hit this button, the outputs are switched. The way I've done this is a simple on-off system where only one of these will be inputted to the filter at a time, and that determines which item is filtered up. The second way to use them is like a valve. So as we see, we have a mix of green and squares on this belt, and if we hit this button, all of it will go to the top. And th this is a simple on-off system where if it receives a one, it will let everything through. And if it receives a zero, it will let nothing through. Now, using filters the first way, where some items pass and some items don't, is a bit less practical, because rarely you'll have multiple different types of items on a belt. But the second way as a valve allows you to make a lot more things, like smart machines, which I'll get into next. If you're wondering what a smart machine is, it's essentially a factory that lets you choose your inputs, and it will automatically output what you desire without having to rework anything. And smart machines are currently possible in the standalone version using a little trick with storages, which I'll demonstrate now. So as you can see, we have this storage setup. And let's say we input blue and red, right? Well, both of these will process through. Right now, this won't work because I don't have enough mixers to handle a full belt. But let's say I did. Just so clear this out. But what if we don't want red? What if we only want blue? And maybe we had another, a third thing for green. Well, how it would work is the blue, since it can't be processed here, it will actually back up and then it will be outputted on the right side of the storage. Now, how this works is that storages have an output priority. They will always try to output on the left side before they can output on the right side. So as you can see, they output on the left side. As it backs up, then they output on the right side. So you can use this as an overflow gate, where once it backs up, it will go onto the next machine. And this can be used to make any color. Now if we use filters, we can easily select what we want to go through and what we don't. So let's say we wanted purple, right? So we would select red and blue, and if we enable it, they'd both pass through to make purple. But let's say we only wanted blue, and that would merge later with a green, and maybe you could have a third filtering system for green. Well, we would disable blue, and if we let them pass, you see the blue goes off to the side and would mix with the green, and the red would go normally to the top, but since it backs up, it won't actually produce anything. And maybe you could have a fourth filtering system, which would allow you to make white. So I've just used some simple circuits here, where you, this will either pass a zero or a one. If it passes a one, it lets the red through. If it passes a zero, it will let, make it pass. And this is a simple enable circuit. Now, smart system can be used for color mixing and stacking. But you may ask, do you actually need to make a smart system if you want to make an anything machine? Well, the answer is yes. Firstly, a smart color mixer isn't necessarily required, but it will allow you to compact your machine much more as you only need a couple of color mixing arrays rather than one for each color. But for smart stacking, it's a different story. Let's say we want to make this shape right here. Well, if we use a normal stacker, let's say like this, right? If we stack them normally, we input into each one, right? It will work just fine and make the square. But let's say we want, if we want to make this shape, this corner would be off, right? So, but in this system, it won't actually work because this stacker needs both. However, if we use a smart machine, like if we have a filter over here, we can say, no, it's, we can say which ones need to be powered and which ones don't. And let's say this one's off, well then we can reroute this belt to the next stacking array where it can be inputted like so. And you would have a smart system for each one. So if this is off and if we trash this, now this will still work fine because this belt is being rerouted to the next stacker. What I have on screen right now is a simple smart painter design. 
Now, to give credit where credit is due, this was entirely made by Emerald Block from the Shapes.io Discord. But the way it works is you input the three colors, and I'll show you how to automate that later. And if the color is inputted, it will either pass through and be mixed with the other color, or it will be denied and moved up to potentially be mixed with blue. Or, if they're both denied, and you just want a sol one solid color, then this will be passed up to here, and it will be passed up even further and just output the color that you desire. Now, if you make an anything machine, you would probably want to automate it. And conveniently, the hub produces an output of the current shape that it's requesting. So if you can use a little system like this. The reason it's so big is because there is no counterclockwise rotator. So you have to rotate it three times to get it into the right position. But how this works is it unstacks it. Remember the top layer goes to the right, the rest goes to the left. Then it cuts it up four times. And then it uses the shape analyzer to display the color of each corner and the shape of each corner. And I've done that four times for the four layers. And now you can take outputs and input this into your anything machine. And you can make the, you can make the current free play shape automatically. And the final step to making a truly automated anything machine is to use color decoding. Now this may seem complicated, but the way it works is you input the color that you want and it will output the appropriate RGB colors. Now this was also inspired by Emerald Block from the Discord. He's great at this sort of stuff. But the way it works is that all of these inputs are knotted. And if any of them, let's say purple, is on, that means it will stop. So these gates will act like AND gates, as if it requires both the bottom and the side input to be on for it to pass a value. So let's say purple is on. This will disable the red color and blue, meaning, and these are also knotted. So once it disables it, it will allow this not gate to turn on, which turns the red and the blue on. Now these inputs could all be connected to this right here, where you take the color from the analyzer and input it straight into here, and then it would decode it, and then you put it, and you input it in straight into the smart mixer, and that's how you color each corner automatically. By combining these three key concepts, being smart factories, breaking down shapes, and RGB decoding, with enough time and effort, you shouldn't have too much difficulty making an anything machine. I haven't made one yet because I've been working on other projects, but if you would like to, go for it. Also, to those who are wondering about my grid display mentioned last video, here it is. I know, it's quite big. <laughs> but uh, right now I have the first 26 letters, uppercase and lowercase, programmed in. And I might make a separate, I might make a video on it once it's finished. But a big shout out to AlexX90 and Emo Block from the Discord for helping me decode the display. Well, that's all for this video. To anyone who wants to make an anything machine, I hope this helps you because I know it's a big project. And for those who wanted to learn about filters, I hope you learned something new. Subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time.